Hey guys, welcome to the Team Fair Evolution Weekly Call. I am so excited to have you here live tonight or watching the recording because we are going to dive into a highly requested topic tonight, which is creating a branded social media game plan with hashtags. Hashtags seem to be this like elusive thing that everyone is trying to find the secret sauce to. I don't know if there's a whole lot of secret sauce, but I've got some really good advice to help you come up with an effective game plan with hashtags that are going to help you reach more of the people that you want to work with, um, either as coaches on your team or as clients. So um, I'm really excited for this topic, and I hope this is beneficial. Um, just a little bit about me. My name is Lauren Kaliski. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the founder of Team Fit Evolution. Um, chances are I'm probably one of your upline coaches. I joined Beachbody in January of 2013. Um, fast forward a few years, I have been here, done a few things, and I am a college dropout turned girl boss. That's my introduction tonight. So when I started coaching, I think it's really important for you to know this. I had no idea what I was doing with social media. I had 100 Facebook friends. I had just gotten Facebook within the year. I was actually really anti-social media. I hated it. I didn't understand why people used it. I thought it's the biggest waste of time, and I kind of still think it's a big waste of time. But the reason I love it today is because it's allowed me to connect with so many people, and I really try to not waste my time on social media and instead use it with a really passionate purpose of connecting with others and you know, sharing um, this gift with people, which is beach body and coaching and all that. So um, I really didn't know what I was doing with social media. And at the time I was 21. So most 21 year olds are not really thinking a whole lot about their health and fitness. They're probably more doing like binge drinking, partying, that type of scene. And that was where my friends were at. They were all broke college students who were either, um, you know, in their final years of college, or maybe they had just graduated college and didn't have a job yet, they didn't have money. And so I quickly, one, one of the key things that I understood as a coach is that I could not just rely on my warm network to build this to a successful business. I identified very early on that if I wanted to grow a successful business, that meant I had to expand my cold market and I had to meet new people and guess what? I couldn't just meet new people. I had to talk to new people too. And um, that was all very much so outside of my comfort zone. Um, but by taking steps every day to get outside my comfort zone, now I'm really comfortable in that space of connecting with people online. And it's such a beautiful gift. I've met like all of my best friends online, which is just crazy. So tonight on this call, we are going to cover some basic do's and don'ts of social media. I see this stuff happening time and time again. So hopefully if you hear some of these do's and don'ts, you will stop doing these things today. Um, how to effectively use hashtags. I hear a lot of people saying that they're attracting coaches with their hashtags or people that are trying to sell them something or, um, you know, other businesses versus your dream client or the person that you are looking for or more or less you before Beachbody, right? That is who you are trying to connect with via hashtags is you before you found this opportunity. Okay, so we are going to create a branded social media strategy and help you turn your social media into money in the bank without ever feeling salesy, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're on this call right now because you're building a business. And so if you are just posting on social media, but you're not earning any income, that's not a business. Right? We've got to turn this into a profitable business and make your social media work for you. So your goal tonight is to leave this call with a plan of what to post, when to post, how to post, what type of hashtags to use, etc. Whether you're going to volunteer or not, you should be doing these activities along with us so that you leave this call with something tangible. Does that sound good, you guys? Type in the chat box if you're with me. Okay. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for jumping on. No worries. Okay, so let's just go over a few social media do's and don'ts. Let's get some basic ground rules so we're all on the same page. So let's set a few things straight. Do. Use hashtags in the comments. So if you're going to use a hashtag in your actual caption, it should be very purposeful. It should not just be random, okay? 
Um, I really recommend avoiding using hashtags in your sentences besides maybe one or two, but you don't want to be doing the Justin Timberlake hashtag eat clean hashtag worked out today hashtag I'm so fit in your caption or whatever. You get what I'm saying? Like there's a difference. You want to post your hashtags below. And it's okay to post a couple maybe in the caption, but with purpose, okay? Um, avoid using hashtags in your sentence. Do not post links to buy, to the shop, to your Beachbody website. Your goal with your Instagram or with your social media is simply to connect with people and ultimately to collect their email or uh, some way to contact them one-on-one -on -one outside of Instagram. Uh, direct message could kind of count, but really the ultimate goal that you're shooting for is to put this person on your list so that you can continue to contact them time and time again as you've got different things to share um, about your business or about what you have to offer them. Be you. I see so many coaches sign up to become a coach and then they go into coach mode on their social media and I don't get it. Just because you signed up as a, as a coach doesn't mean you need to be a certain way. Don't lose your identity. Don't become just another beach body coach. Be you because you are wonderful. You are amazing. And when you are truly you and your authentic self on social media is when you're going to start attracting the right type of people. Um, I always hear people say, I, I, I'm not attracting the right person. Like, okay, you're probably not being you. You're trying to be someone else. Maybe you're trying to be your outline. Maybe um, you're trying to be some other famous beach body coach that you really look up to. Take inspiration from those people, but make sure you stay authentic to you, okay? Share your story. Share your story. Don't sell on social media. Okay, so social media is what we use to share, 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 and we sell in private. All the selling that I do happens, selling, I don't ever feel like I sell things to be honest, guys, but all the sharing I do that leads to sales really happens one-on-one -on -one in conversations, on the phone, et cetera, okay? Get vulnerable with your story too. Dig deep. Um, you got to get beyond the surface level. Um, your story, like Shrek says, is an onion, and you just got to keep peeling off those layers bit by bit. Doesn't happen overnight. I'm not asking you to chop the onion in half and go straight to the core, right? You got to peel those layers off and continue to get deeper and not let fear of what someone's going to think of you hold you back because I promise whatever that, that thing that you're most scared to share, it's going to connect and impact somebody out there. Um, way more than you could have ever imagined, okay? Um, as a coach, it's not your job to be perfect. You don't need to do every single workout. You don't need to eat um, ground turkey and spinach for every single meal. You are not a fitness perfectionist. You are not a fitness model. You are none of these things. You are perfectly imperfect. Embrace your imperfections. Um, get real with like, your entire story and your journey and just that you, that you don't need to be a certain way to be a coach. Um, I see a lot of people, once again, trying to be what they think a, a good coach is. And I like to call that being a Stepford coach, right? So don't be a Stepford coach where you're trying to be perfect because nobody's going to believe it. Okay. Try new things and, um, don't give up if you fail because gosh, failure is such a big part of the process, man. It, it is the pathway to success. So if you're failing, guess what? You're doing it right because you're trying. You can't fail if you're not trying. So I'm proud of you if you're failing because you're learning something every step of the way. And that is how I've gotten here today. <laughs> failure. But I've gotten back up time and time again. And I refuse to let any setback, any um, speed bumps along the way stop me. Okay. So those are just some do's and don'ts. We're going to go over some social media basics now. And this kind of applies to some of our, um, our volunteers for today. We're going to take a look at their social media accounts in just a, in just a few minutes, but I want to go over some social media basics. And, and this is kind of opinion. Branding one-on-one. I truly believe the best and only way to brand yourself is with your name. I know some of you might have common names out there. I thankfully am the only Lauren Kaliski in the world, so I don't have to fight over my name with anyone. Maybe that doesn't apply to you, but I highly suggest using your name, put an underscore in there, do whatever you need to do. You could also do I am Lauren Kaliski or I am Alexa Luckenbach. Uh, Luckenbach. 
I tried. <laughs> um, but make sure it's your name. Why? Because you can take your name with you always. Um, why don't I want to brand myself as, um, like, PCOS fighter Lauren Kaliski? Because I'm more than a PCOS fighter. You're more, oh yeah, Kitchen Queen eats clean. Okay, that's what I was before. Thank you. I was like trying to think of an alias for myself and just forgot that I even had one. <laughs> Doi. Okay, Kitchen Queen eats clean. Yeah, like why? <laughs> I was Kitchen Queen eats clean. <laughs> Okay, so you've been a coach on the team for a while now, if you knew me when I was Kitchen Queen Eats Clean, but that is who I was <laughs> for the first few years of my business. And while I thought that name was cute and catchy, kind of is, right, Kitchen Queen Eats Clean, it does not describe who I am. I am so much more than a Kitchen Queen who eats clean, and guess what? I don't always eat clean, so it really wasn't representative of my brand. And your brand is going to change and evolve over time, but you are always gonna be you. I'm always gonna be me, Lauren Kaliski, so my brand can evolve with my handle. Does that make sense of why you wanna use your name? This is something I'm really, I feel passionate about, <laughs> guys. You need to use your name, okay? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm joking. But I've seen everyone who wasn't using their name switch to using their name. Literally every successful coach on this team besides Brittany Powers, okay? And Brittany Powers is obviously killing it as Fit Mom, Fit Brit, or whatever she is. And I'm not going to tell her to change. But every other top coach on this team uses their name. Is there any other exceptions besides Brittany? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay? Success leaves clues, my friends. Success leaves clues. Use your prime real estate. What is your prime real estate? Your prime real estate would be your profile picture. So that little circle on Instagram that you get when you click someone's, when you like someone's photo, that's prime real estate. Your bio is prime real estate. You want to make sure those prime real estate areas are showing your very best self. Oh, one fit coconut. Okay. There's one. There's another one. Alexis. Yeah. That I, I, she rocks that. I'm not going to disagree with her on that one either, but for the most part, it is everyone is their name. Okay. Um, use quality photos. So, you know, iPhones have come a long way. Cell phone cameras have come a long way. The photo on the left is a professional photo. I've had professional photos taken. I have a couple tips of advice for you with quality photos. One, get yourself an iPhone 7, an iPhone 7 Plus, and start using that portrait mode. Or even just update your phone because this is now a business write-off, a tax write-off, okay? You use this for business. You need to have the best one. You need to be taking quality photos and the cameras just keep getting better. So I have the iPhone 6 right now. I'm upgrading before Punta Cana because like you need, I need the best camera. Taking photos is part of my job and I need to be using quality photos beyond just professional ones, okay? So I'm gonna upgrade my phone. Um, the other recommendation is how many, how many of you guys have friends who are photographers. How many of you guys have friends on Facebook who are trying to start photography businesses? How many times have you reached out to those friends? <laughs> okay, so there's so many people out there that will take quality photos for you. Try to collaborate with people in your network, okay? Because I promise, Okay, Deanna, if you think there's nobody in your network that takes professional photos, I, actually, all of you, if you don't think there's someone in your network right now that takes, has a good camera and wants to take photos and wants to start a photography business, I think you're probably wrong. So go prove me or go whatever. Just go post on your social media and be like, hey, are any of my friends here starting photography businesses or, you know, looking to expand their profile? Pro portfolio. Sorry guys, I'm really having trouble talking tonight. Is anyone trying to expand their portfolio? I'm looking for someone to collaborate with. Yeah. Do a status, ask for a recommendation. Um, exactly. Recommendation, referral, anything. Go do that tonight. Use quality photos. You need to have quality photos to use. Posting photos is part of your job now. Your profile photo without a doubt in my mind needs to be you. It needs to be your face and I need to be able to see your eyeballs because people connect with eyeballs and a smile. So smile and let me see your eyeballs. So no sunglasses. 
Be you times two on your social media. People cannot hear your voice like you can hear me today. You can hear the passion in my voice. You can see the expressions on my face. You can see me, you can feel me, hopefully a little bit, right? We're, we're talking through a computer screen, so obviously something's lost. But you need to be you times two on your social media because they can't feel that energy. So you need to be, like, Janelle Summers has said this before, and it's just, it's not about being fake. It's just about being, like, the biggest, brightest version of yourself on your social media pro profile because that is what's going to draw people into you. If you're just like, eh, I did my workout today, yay. Like, no one's going to be interested. Nobody's going to care. If you're not excited about it, no one else is going to be either, okay? And who are you speaking to with your social media? Chances are the person you're speaking to with your social media is you before Beachbody. So make sure you're talking to that person. What was it that attracted you to your coach? What was it that made you um, decide Beachbody was part of your solution, okay? That is who you're speaking to as yourself. Okay, so here are some things to think about before posting on social media, because it doesn't matter what hashtag you use. You could use all the best hashtags, and your posts can still get nowhere or not get any traction if you're not really speaking to your audience and putting some thought into your social media posts. So I want to emphasize the fact that uh, quality content is very key, okay? So I want you to think about these questions every time, ask yourself these questions every time you go to post. Why does this matter? Who cares? Why should someone care about this post? Sorry to be a little bit harsh, but seriously, why should someone care? Okay, you need to, Danielle and Tony talked about this in a social media training and um, I forget what they, do you remember what, what she said exactly, Alexa? She was just like, she said it in such a way, she's like, why should I care about this? Like, I'm sorry, I don't care that you ate a tuna sandwich today. Like, there needs to be more behind that tuna sandwich than just, this is what I had for lunch. Yeah, the so what. What is your so what factor? Um, and tell the story behind the photo. So I'm working on all of these things, you guys. I'm by no means perfect. Um, and I, I worked on this actually just recently. I posted a picture of an acai bowl, which yeah, people will be like, so what? But the acai bowl had a deeper meaning to me because I couldn't afford to eat acai bowls whenever the heck I wanted, you know, two years ago. I was balling on a budget. I could, you know, barely afford to pay my bills, let alone treat myself to things like healthy food that costs a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, so tell the story behind what it is you're posting and who is this post speaking to? You before Beachbody or whoever that person is. And does this image post fit my brand? Is it on brand to me? And we'll go more into your brand later. And how often can you commit to posting? Chances are if you've done any social media training with Beachbody, you've heard something like you need to be posting three to five times a day. I'm going to challenge that. I would much, much, much rather you post one quality post a day than three to five I'm posting because my upline told me I need to post three to five times a day, okay? Quality over quantity always, always, okay, guys? Seriously. Okay, so tonight's topic or tonight's call, we're really diving into hashtags. Some of this stuff you can apply to other social medias, uh, other social media platforms, but hashtags, um, at least from my experience, I primarily use them on Instagram. So we're going to be focusing on Instagram tonight. One second, I need a drink. Okay. So, Let's dive into it. So Instagram is a visual app. Your feed matters. Your feed matters. Your feed matters. Your feed matters. So right now, if you're not on your phone, go back and look at your last nine photos. What does the story tell from the grid perspective? Is there a theme pattern to your, to your Instagram? Um, your photos must captivate the audience. Otherwise, they're never, ever going to read your caption. Your caption, your words mean nothing if it's, if it's, placed underneath a shitty photo. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, what made you follow the last five accounts that you followed? When I scroll, when you scroll your grid of photos, what do you want to feel, see, and know? So I'm going to stop the share really quick. 
and we're going to go look at our volunteers Instagrams and kind of do some reflection and you can look at you can look at yours and do this or you can look with me with volunteers hold on a second I'm trying to figure out how to do this share screen hold on sorry guys airplay okay so we're gonna look at Jess's Instagram and Catherine's Instagram. Okay, so here we are in the grid perspective. Hold on, I need to see my slides at the same time. I'm working on two computers right now, this is hilarious. Um, where am I? Here we are. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna look at, well first, prime real estate is right here. You see the prime real estate. You've got, um, can you see my mouse cursor? Okay, so you've got an awesome profile photo here. We've got eyes, smile, great. Um, then bio, we're gonna dig a little bit more into this later, but just this is what I'm talking about with prime real estate. This is the prime real estate right here. But let's look at the nine photos together because this is like about what you see together. Um, and so if you look at this, what story does this tell? Okay, so if I didn't know Jess at all, I would say this is, it looks like a fit mom who is on a journey of living a healthy lifestyle. So I see food, I see some books, um, some inspiration with the quotes, okay? So I, I, I see, I, I'm gonna be honest, from this, I see that Jess is a coach. I don't really know a whole lot be, beyond that she's a coach and she's a mom. It doesn't say she's a coach here, but I personally could tell she's a coach from this feed. That's totally fine. I, I want you to, I want it to be known that you're a coach by looking at your feed, but I want it to also be known that you are so much more than just a coach, right? Okay. Um, is there a theme to it? Yes, there is. She's using her Instagram um, story photos. So like using those and food photos, like it looks similar. She's got white borders on, along them. So it's cohesive. I would say it does fit together nicely. Um, and does it captivate an audience? Would I click on these photos? If I was, if I was viewing her profile from this standpoint, would I click on these photos to actually read the caption? Um, cookies? Heck yeah. I love cookies. Give me cookies. Uh, so let's look at this. Cool. So when she's got a lot on her mind, she's telling the story behind the cookies. Okay, cool. I love it. So there's a story behind here. Now, um, one tip of advice with this post to just increase because I mean, this is a, a good post. You put some time into it, clearly. But we've got, what, 10 likes and one comment. So maybe just ask people if you want the recipe to the cookies, comment below or something like that that engages them. Okay. Um, and then let's go and look at Catherine's really quick. So here we are again, the nine grid perspective. Um, and please, can you guys help me in the, in the chat box too? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this stuff. I'm gonna pull up in the chat box so I can see it. So what do you see from this nine grid perspective about Catherine? I see that she's on a journey, some transformation pictures, she likes cats. Yeah, there's lots of cats. Fitness, fashion, filters, quotes, cool. Okay, that's totally fine, Deanna. I'm glad. This is the perfect call for you to be on. So Deanna in the chat back said, I feel like this is what I'm struggling with. I feel like all my posts are health and fitness related. And I guarantee, girlfriend, you are not the only one. I want to help you guys find a happy medium. It needs to be obvious that you are a coach. Not obvious, but it needs to be clear. Don't be a closet coach. It's one of my tips later on. Don't be a closet coach. Like what? That doesn't make any sense. Why would you be a closet coach? You should be loud and proud and want to share this beautiful gift with people. 
but you are so much more than a coach. You're not boring, Deanna. Stop. <laughs> I'm going to show you, none of you are boring. Gosh, I think I'm the most boring person ever. Okay. So, and we know that's not true. So like, like just stop saying that you're boring. There's so much more about you than just being a coach. So we're going to dive into those things tonight. And, and these ladies definitely have some of that on there as well, but we want to like find a good balance of it as well. Okay. I'm going to go back to this. Okay. Next page. Next slide. Okay, so you want to be curating content that you are proud of. You do not want to just be throwing up social media posts because someone told you that you should be posting three to five times a day. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that, that method. That is madness to me and the quickest way to burn yourself out because you're going to feel like, oh, I have to be posting three to five times a day, but I don't know what to post. So then you're going to start throwing up posts that don't feel good or aren't authentic. And when you start really implementing a game plan, what you're going to find is posting one to two times a day becomes easy. And then you're inspired and you, and you, you have ideas to post three to five times a day. Don't force it. Okay. So tell your story often and focus on that whole quality versus quantity concept and map out your content for the week. I like to map out, you know, five to seven posts that I'm going to do throughout the week so that. If I am lacking inspiration, I've got something to turn to that is going to add value to my following and not just put something up to put something up. I mean, I think we've all been there like, oh my gosh, it's been two days since I posted. I need to post something now. Scroll through my phone, find the last inspiration quote that I screenshotted. Like, have you been there? Because I've definitely been there and that's, this is not serving you or your audience. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go to this chat box really quick because I want to make sure. Uh, hi, guys. I just got off work and I'm doing laundry dishes for the 15th time this week. Yeah, that's relatable. You're not the only one. I'm doing laundry and dishes, but I still got my 30-minute my workout in today. Mom win. Relatable. Relatable. Real. Um, I've lost more followers to coach than I, than when I wasn't, that's been the most frustrating. I've lost myself on social media. My IG was a journal for me and I gained followers just being me. Oh, go back to just being you. You are you. Now you're a coach as well. That's something to add on to who you are, but it should never become all of you. Okay. Um, I use Unum. So plan out my posts. Unum's really fun because you can see how your pictures are going to look together. Here, I'll show you what it looks like because now I know how to do this fancy screen sharing thing. So might as well use it. Just is going to take me a second. But I really like Unum. Um, it, it helps me with just seeing things visually. So I'll show you what it looks like. I haven't, I, I've been bad about this stuff lately. Like I haven't planned anything for a while now, but um, I use this almost every time before I post. So it, it gives you, these are the ones, these photos down here are the ones that are already on my Instagram, but up here I can play around, I can move things around. So I can go like this and move this here and really plan out what my social media feed looks like and then look at it from this perspective and be like, oh, that looks great, right? And then I can even click on here and you can add the captions in. Wait, hold on. So you can put your caption in this little box down here and then it will save. I've also been doing this in drafts. So I use my drafts on Instagram to save posts that I want to post later on. Does anyone else do that on drafts? It's really handy. I'll show you that too really quick. So if I click here, I've got drafts like down here. Of, of things I want to use or whatever. Okay. Plan things out because life is going to continue to happen. That's awesome that you have like 50 drafts. So maybe, I, I don't know if you're going to use all 50, maybe clean them out so that it's easier to find, but drafts are awesome, right? Like it's, it's legit to have that right there. Okay. Um, we gotta, we gotta keep flying. I knew this was going to happen. The intro is going to take a, a, a hot minute. So let's keep going. Don't just post, just to post. We talked about that already. Getting featured on Instagram, collaborating with other brands. This is a great way to um, 
grow your following and to work with other entrepreneurs. So network, network with other accounts. Anytime, did I tag? I can't see if I tagged it in this one. But, oh yeah, I tagged Camelback. So these like women who hike mountain girls, these are all feature accounts for outdoor women. Camelback is the brand. So get in the habit of tagging any brand that you're wearing. Um, uh, schedule 15 minutes into your week to, I, I like to call it not shout out for shout out, I should change this now, but to collaborate. So to contact other brands and be like, hey, like I, I'm an entrepreneur. I love the t-shirts that you're designing. Alexa has been doing this lately. Um, and she just got like a bunch of t-shirts that now she's going to use for challenge group prizes. And she, all she needs to do is take a picture of her t-shirts and like some company sending her t-shirts. So, and I've done the same thing with m multiple different companies. Um, so tag those brands and get their attention. Also use location tags when you're not at home. So this is another great way to network with people. Make sure you're taking advantage of this little location spot, especially if you want to grow a local team. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I wish I had coaches in my area like you do in the Pacific Northwest. Guess what, friends? I had zero coaches, zero network, zero team in the Pacific Northwest when I signed up to be a coach. It's something that I've actively pursued in growing. Okay. And this is one of the ways is I network with my local community. I tag Bellingham and everything. I tag anything, anywhere I am. If I'm at the Palm Springs airport, I could connect with other people at the Palm Springs airport just by tagging the airport or whatever. Okay. Um, introducing yourself to your followers, write this down, the stuff in the blue box. You're not going to have time to do this down. So write this down. Here's a great way to introduce yourself to your followers and you should be doing this regularly. I'm gonna challenge you all to introduce yourselves to your followers after this call. So if not tonight, maybe tomorrow, you start work on this. And I will do the same thing. I need to reintroduce myself to my followers because guess what? You're always getting new followers or if you're doing this right, you should always be getting new eyes. Now, my following over the last four years, I have 12,000 followers. I have not grown a huge following overnight or anything like that. I've been slow and steady, but I've been, constantly moving in the right direction. I really don't go backwards when it comes to followers. I'm always gaining a handful of new eyes every day. And, and, and for me, that's a win because once again, I'm focused on the whole quality over quantity. I can't connect with all 50,000 followers. So I, do I need 50,000 followers to grow a successful business? No, all you need is one follower to grow a successful business, right? And I like to call them followers. Friends, who are your followers? Followers. So introduce yourself to your followers. In your caption, answer, hi, I'm blah. Most days you can find me blah. I'm serving the world by blah. And I'm mostly known as this. Things I'm most passionate about in life are, and end with a question. So I'll read mine where I've kind of implemented this. Insert your story, please. Hi there, I've, been, I've got a bunch of new and old friends here. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so weird reading it. So I figured I should probably introduce myself. I'm Lauren, a college dropout turned CEO. Most days you can find me working from my laptop in my yoga pants with a messy bun. Hey, and no makeup. Don't let this photo fool you. My coworkers happen to be two of my best friends. One's furry, the other one's cute, AKA Zachary Christmas. He's a big part of all the behind the, behind the scenes action in our biz. My passion as a lifestyle coach is helping other women find their health and happiness while creating a life of time and financial freedom. I am forever grateful for my struggles because without them, I would have never stumbled upon my strengths. I hit rock bottom back in 2010 when I was diagnosed with PCOS. I think what I to say something like what felt like a blessing or what felt like a curse ended up being a blessing in disguise. And then I forget what question I asked, but I asked them to tell me something about them as well. Oh, I can't see that bottom part because there's something kind of covering it, but you get the idea, right? So make it a goal. Even if you don't follow this format per se, introduce yourself to your following and ask Get to know them, ask them a question, be interested in their lives as well. And this could be a great way to start some conversations. Okay, so now let's really dive into the getting new eyes on your kick-ass content. I just wanted to make sure everyone really understood what kick-ass content is and what it looks like. And um, before we dived into getting eyes on your content, because it doesn't matter how many eyes are on your content if the content isn't good, right? That's a foundation the content. Um, 
And something that something really powerful that has helped Alexa and I, and I, I think Emma's on the call too. Emma too. Gary V said at uh, the the most recent personal development conference we went to, he said, "Stop focusing on creating content and get better at documenting." So just document your life, take pictures, get in the habit of taking pictures of your life and being real. Like you don't need to create content. Creating content is a lot of work. Documenting your life and just taking pictures as you go, it should be really not effortless, but it should be easy. It should be something that is fun and, and it doesn't take as much, you know, thought of, of, Oh, what am I going to curate today? Like, Guys, just share your life because that's what we do as coaches. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm messing with this little video thing. It's distracting me. Okay, so on Instagram, use hashtags to connect with your dream clients. Stop using health and fitness hashtags. Stop using health and fitness hashtags. Stop using health and fitness hashtags. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> Don't use Beachbody hashtags unless it's very intentional. Every once in a while, I will hashtag Beachbody coach because I am a proud Beachbody coach and I am not ashamed of it. But I'm not using hashtag 21 day fix, hashtag T25, hashtag insanity, hashtag weight loss. No. You got to think outside the box, like way outside the box. Okay. Be intentional and strategic with your hashtags. Be an active member of the community. So you can't just copy and paste hashtags and just expect like all this magic to come to your business. Like you have got to be an active member of the community. I have built relationships in on Instagram, person by person, talking to people, commenting back to them, really being an active member of the community, taking an interest in, in other people's lives. So if someone comments on my photos, I go click on their thing and I see what they're about and I comment on their photos. That's being an active member of the community. Respond to your comments. Not only does that help your, your post get on more eyes, it's going to create that relationship. And if you're like, I don't know what hashtags to use. Well, how much time have you really spent researching what hashtags to use? Are you just like, hmm, I'm going to write a list of hashtags. And you just don't do any research. Like, you've got to research this stuff. There is a little bit of, I don't know what you call it, science? Not really. But there is a little bit of strategy behind this stuff, okay? And we're going to do that tonight on the call. Is we're going we're gonna, to, I'm going to show you how I research hashtags uh, and we're going to do that with some of the volunteers. One of the most helpful tools that I have used, one of the best investments in my business when it comes to money is Instagram. This is such a cheap investment in your business. I don't understand why every coach is not using it. I don't get it. I don't know why you're not using it right now. There is a free three day trial and then it's like 30 cents a day for it to like photos for you. The more time you buy, the cheaper it is. Um, it's not like it's not on auto renew. So it's not something that's going to renew on your card for nine 99 a month. You literally go on there, you buy as much time as you can afford right now. And then Instagram works for you while you sleep. Okay. And I'm going to show you kind of what my, actually, no, we're not going to go too much into Instagram, um, tonight. I'm not going to show you like how I have mine set up right now. I can do another call on that. I'm happy to do it. But I just wanted to talk about Instagram briefly because it's such an amazing tool. You're missing a huge opportunity if you're not using it, okay? Um, yeah, Friday introductions. That's awesome. Do you suggest if a coach isn't full-time yet that we introduce our day job or as coaching? Um, well, what's your goal? What's your goal, Whitley? So you could say, you know, right now I, I'm stuck at my nine to five, but I, I'm a girl boss and I'm, you know, working on creating an, a, an exit strategy or I don't know, whatever. How would you say that? Alexa, can you give her some advice on that? Because I feel like you know exactly how to talk about that. Um, let's see. Okay. We'll do another call on Instagram. At the end of this call, when I stop the recording, I will open Instagram and show those of you that are on live what I do. Um, I just don't want to keep this recording. I want to make this recording focused and not get too distracted. But you guys, this is this this is huge. I love Instagram. Whoops, 
whoops, whoops. Okay, we're gonna go past Instagram because I don't wanna get stuck there. So we're gonna go into creating a social media game plan. You should have your pen and papers out now. So we are going to look at our volunteers' social media, starting with their bio and their prime real estate. And I'm gonna just give you some constructive feedback on your bio and your prime real estate. Thank you to both Catherine and Jessica for volunteering. And seriously, like this all comes with like a whole lot of love. Like I said, this is all opinion. I am, I have no idea what I'm doing. So yeah, that's my disclaimer. Um, okay. Fit with Catherine. So obviously my first tip of advice is going to be to brand your name. Um, I love that it's fit with Catherine, but I think you're more than just fit with Catherine. And I can tell that from your amazing bio. I love your bio. Um, I think it's great. The only thing that I would suggest adding, actually a couple things I would suggest adding is something that identifies you as a coach. So I'm not like saying don't be a coach. I'm saying be Catherine, who is also a coach. So have some sort of word in there, whatever you want to call yourself. Don't say beach body coach, please, because that uh, would not be how I would recommend branding yourself. People have preconceived notions about beach body coaches, about beach body, and you don't need, you want them to get to know you, right? Uh, you don't, oh, you changed it yesterday. Oh, you just changed it to fit Catherine. Okay, change it back. Change it back, girlfriend. You had it right. Okay. Um, how do you get the bio to list like Catherine? That's a great question. So I'm assuming she did this in her notepad. So go to your notepad, type it out, space, and then copy and paste it into your bio. That's how you do the spacing. Okay. So I want you to identify yourself as a coach in the bio, change it back to your name, and also use your link. Where is your link? Why do you have no link on here? You need to have a link. Um, and if you don't have a website, link it to your Facebook. If you don't want people to go to your Facebook, link it to your coach application. Link it to your challenge group application. Link it to anything. <laughs> but use that because it's prime real estate. And it's something people will click, okay? Um, everyone should be using applications by now. Um, make YouTube a part of my story, make a YouTube of my story. Yes. That would be a great thing to link in your bio and in your link, but everyone, everyone, everyone should be using their link. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about with your link, you'll see when we go to Jessica's in just one second, but Catherine, otherwise, besides changing your name, adding something about being a coaching and using your link, I love it. I love everything you're about on this bio. It is great. And I guess the positive vibe tribe might kind of, kind of, you know, uh, if you're, if you, if you were me, maybe I would know that's coaching, but the average person probably wouldn't, um, is a Facebook link or application link better. It depends on what your goal is right now. Now, if you're having a challenge group coming up and you want to be getting challenge group applications, you better have your challenge group application link in there. But if you're not looking for challengers right now, or you're not looking for coaches, put your Facebook link. I switch my link on a weekly basis, and you should too. Yeah, Alexis goes to her newsletter sign up right now. A week ago, it was to purchasing t-shirts. A week before that, it was to, I don't know, something else. She's always changing it. Okay, let's go to our next volunteer. Okay, so, um, oh wait. So same thing obviously the handle. I would also encourage right here, Jess, you want to have your full name. So this or whatever your name is that is searchable. So if you want to have your Facebook name here, if someone can find you on Facebook, like no one's going to be able to find just Jess on Facebook. You want to have a name that if they Googled it, it's going to maybe pull open your other social media as well. That makes sense. Um, Emerald Beach Body Coach. I love that you are a proud and loud coach. That is awesome. You're not a closet coach. That is great. But there's no need for people to know that you're an Emerald Beach Body Coach because nobody else knows what that means besides us. Okay. So identify yourself to your following as something that they know what that means. Okay. Transformation coach, lifestyle coach, health and fitness coach. Describe to people what you are beyond just a beach body coach. 
PCOS warrior, postpartum journey after second C-section. Great. I think it's awesome. Um, only things I would change is your full name, um, the Emerald Beachbody coach, and then sometimes what I like to do here, so this is the link. Jess is using her link, which is great, but I have no idea what this link takes me to. So chances are I'm not going to click it. So maybe the last line in your bio points down. You see how mine says work with me? Click. It's very clear. You want this to be clear. And I change this word too. Sometimes this says, you know, join the wellness co or whatever. And I, and I change the link. So I change these two lines depending on um, what my goal is at the time. Okay. So that's the, that would be my bio feedback for um, both of these ladies. If there's any questions, I hope that helped for all of you. I'm sure some of those things apply to some of you, even if we weren't looking at your bio, right? So let me go back to our slides. This is a fun team call, lots of jumping around. Okay, um, bio basics, I should have gone over this before, but don't be a closet coach. Who are you beyond a coach? So if we didn't look at your bio, maybe write these things down so that you can address them later. Use all of your characters. I see some people have really short bios. If your bio, when you're trying to submit it, doesn't tell you your bio is too long, you're not using all of your characters, okay? You need to use all of those characters. And by characters, I'm the letters, right? Um, because that's your prime real estate, right? How can your followers contact you? Um, I forgot about that when I was looking at both of your guys' bios. So Jess, um, she has hers as a business profile. So she's got a contact button up there. But Catherine, she's a personal profile. So she doesn't have the contact button up there. And um, there isn't a way for her followers to contact her outside of her uh, Instagram. So I would maybe make a clear way for someone to contact you either by putting your email or um, you could do let's chat arrow down to your Facebook or whatever. Okay, use your link. Do not post your beach body link. Capiche? Capiche. Number two, what are you all about beyond beach body? So now we're gonna go into some brainstorming. I want you to write one through seven down on your paper right now. And I'm gonna do this too. Actually, I probably need to just talk. But one through seven on your paper. And um, Jessica and Catherine, I need you ladies to do this because we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need your examples in a second. Um, but list of seven things that you are all about beyond Beachbody. So Beachbody is not one of those things. Go ahead and work on that. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share because you guys are all working on your lists. And let's, Catherine or Jess, who wants to go first? Not you. <laughs> Catherine's like, not me. <laughs> Okay, where are you, Jess? Hi. Okay. okay, so I was still writing my list, but I can just list it off. Um, so I'm a mom and a wife. Um, um, I love allergen-free baking. My kids both have food allergies. Okay. Um, I'm a nursing mom. Past six months, um, everything's mom-related. Um, I love to be active. I have two pets. Was that six? And um, my and my husband is my high school sweetheart. Those are like two, those, are, <laughs> That's so cute. those are my seven. I'm really big on true love and all that sappy stuff. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is good. So I have down. We're gonna we're gonna go deeper though because we need to. Um, make it a little bit more specific, but I'm writing these down too so that I can keep my, keep this together. So hopefully you guys are all writing down your seven things. Um, so you're a mom of two boys, two girls, two girls, mom of two girls. Okay. So see how we're getting more specific now. You're not just a mom, you're a mom of two girls. So you can connect with other moms who are moms of two girls. Okay. Um, you're a wife. I'm trying to think how we can go deeper on that. There's a high school sweetheart and wife kind of ties in together. So I'm going to, I'm going to put those together. Wife who married her high school sweetheart. 
Okay, so we're gonna need to come up with another one, um, which is totally fine. Um, nursing, so does it go beyond, like does, why are you nursing? I'm nursing, uh, well I'm nursing because A, it saves money, it sounds really bad, it's the healthiest thing, it saves money, but because um, my daughter um, got a dairy and soy allergy, so it's just best that I nurse her, okay. and that formula is really expensive. Okay, these are great, but do you see like how just like asking you that one simple question, we just went so much deeper. That was so many things that you can you can talk to. I, I, I'm a holistic mom because it saves money, um, because my child has food allergies. Like these are all really relatable things, you know? Like it's so much more than just um, nursing. I guess I'm trying to find something. How could we use nursing to tie that into your brand so when you're not nursing, you can still make that part of your... your oh, I, I love to come up with um, recipes. My husband's... Okay. My husband's a chef, so I did not share that. I'm a wife. I'm a chef wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I learn a lot um, and I come up with recipes and most of the things I do are my own recipes without... It's something I love to do. Okay. So I'm just going to put... Um, like holistic mama. Okay. This is more, this is deeper than just being a mom of girls, but this is being a holistic mama of, of girls with allergies. So then we just kind of combined nursing and allergy free. Okay. So, so we're, we're combining some of these. I'm making this harder for you, but this is good because it's getting deeper every time we're getting deeper with these. Okay. So four, you're active. Um, why are you active? Because I love it. I played sports all my life. I just I, okay. So grew up active and working on your journey postpartum, right? Yes. On staying active with kids. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, we're gonna have to narrow that one down a little bit in a second. You've got two pets. Are you working besides Beachbody? No, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay. I'm really bad at this, I guess. Yeah, I'm a stay-at-home mom. You're not bad at this. This is the whole exercise. Thank you for doing it with me. Um, my, my husband does work seven days a week, which is a lot of my why. He's worked seven days a week for five years. So <laughs> this is so good. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to add, I'm trying to find some that are not mom related. Maybe. I know that's. <laughs> Well, these are all good though. Like moms are just, that's, that is you who you're speaking to. So when you are posting, I don't want you to talk to anyone else besides the mom with two girls out there. If you end up attracting people that aren't moms, that's great. But that is so much of who you are that you're going to have so much in common with anyone who has um, any similarities that tie into these things, you know, like your, your conversations are going to be more natural. You're going to have a, a team of moms who get you and like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's just going to help you yeah. find your tribe. I um, will say that I've found more recently. Um, I have found more people messaging me about what I did when I was pregnant, like with both, since I've been pregnant twice. And, um, that's probably been my biggest thing is like, I've had a majority of people I'm talking to right now, women are pregnant moms right now or trying to get pregnant because I have PCOS. It's like a big, that's been the biggest thing so far the last couple of months. Okay. Um, holistic mama with PCOS. So that's where we just went. Cause that's part of the reason probably why you're holistic as well is because of PCOS. Yeah. Um, uh, two pets and you're not a stay at home mom. You're a work from home mom on a mission. Okay. So own that, like you're, yeah. Raising two kids is at, and being at home with them is a full-time job, but you're doing so much more than just that. You're trying to grow a business too. So really own that because there's so many other stay at home moms who maybe are looking for some sort of outlet beyond just um, raising their kids, right? They want some adult interaction or, um, they want to, you know, take some burden off of their significant other, just like you, you, you described. Um, so that mission work from home mom on a mission is the why is your husband and, um, you know, just getting to be at home with your kids and making sure that they grow up living a healthy active lifestyle or whatever it is for you. Two pets. Um, what kind of pets? I have a dog and a cat. Who are best friends. Aww. Okay. 
one dog and cat. So we have one more thing. So mom of two girls, wife who married her high school sweetheart, holistic mama with PCOS. Um, I'm a sister. I only have sisters. So that's the only like, major. No, it's not true. I would really love, it's my dream to travel, like to take my kids and my husband would all just travel literally anywhere and everywhere. Yes. And, <laughs> sorry. That's like the, that was my go-to, my big, hopefully dream for this business is to literally go eat anywhere and try anything with the people I love most in the world. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, amen. Because that is one of my big ones. And it is, oh my gosh, it's the best feeling ever. And to take your family and to share those experiences together. This is so good because even if that's not your life today, I was talking about that stuff far before it was my life. Like you guys might see me today and be like, oh, Lauren's always traveling and she's always eating yummy food. Like, no, I wasn't always doing that. So put your vision out there and talk about this stuff now because not only will the universe hear it, but your followers are going to hear it and they are going to start taking notes because they're going to watch you start to live that dream step by step, day by day, journey, you know, year by year as your journey progresses. So um, dream to travel with her family. I, I have to put this, I have to make this more concise, but I'm just writing it down right now. So dream to travel with her family and eat her way around the world. No shame in that because let me tell you, there's a lot of good food out there and everyone should try it all. So, okay. So we kind of got seven things. And like I said, if, if I was doing this with you, it's like a little bit more time, we would probably make it a little bit more concise. Like I would, I would narrow some of these things down, but I have the seven things down. I want to make sure you have them down to mom of two girls, wife who married her high school sweetheart, holistic mom of PCOS, active postpartum journey, two pets who are best friends, work from home mom on a mission, dream to travel with her family and eat her way around the world. That sounds so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right? And that's, that's how it should make you feel. If your brand doesn't resonate in your heart, like in a really feel good way, you haven't gotten deep enough on it. Like you, you gotta keep asking yourself questions and, and, and looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, okay, who am I really? Cause you, I think we all, we all like to discredit ourselves and be like, I am so boring. I do nothing all day besides dishes and laundry and that's my life and honestly that is my life most days um and I do some work too but it doesn't seem all that exciting on the every day um but when you really dig into it you realize that even if the day-to-day -day isn't exciting you have so much to share of, of where you're going and what you are going to do so let's see here I'm going to go back to our slides and now that we've got hopefully you all have your list of seven by now so you take your list of seven and you give each one of those things a day of the week, okay? And there is a little bit of strategy that you want to use when picking what day of the week. Um, I also would really highly suggest that with your seven things, you can tie in a transformation and coaching into those seven things things. Does that make sense? So you don't need to be posting a transformation or coaching story all the time, but you want to have a day where it kind of fits in. So like for, um, active postpartum journey, that could be a Tuesday thing, right? Cause transformation Tuesday. Now, do you necessarily need to post a transformation picture? No, you could just talk about the transformation that's happening on your journey or whatever. Okay. Um, so go through and give each one of those things a day of the week. So, um, let's like make Mondays mom life, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, it could also be Man Crush Monday, you know, because you've got your wife, you married your high school sweetheart. So, but we could make that. Um, I've been wanting to incorporate my husband more and he won't let me take pictures of him like, work, like working out or just like he's very particular about how I portray him because <laughs> um, he doesn't really use social media. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, yeah, that's a really good idea for the Man Crush Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So either, either 
just give each one a day of the week. It doesn't really matter what day it is. You just want to put a little bit of thought into it so that it makes sense. Um, work from home on a work from home mom on a mission. That's a really good Sunday one. Why? Because Sundays are a great day for call to actions or um, that type of post, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So now. Once you've given everything a day of the week, you've kind of got like this schedule for yourself. Now, do you need to stick to this schedule like it is the golden law or whatever the golden rule? No, you don't have to stick to it like precisely. It just gives you something to fall back on when you're lacking inspiration. It also gives you something to be consistent with. It gives you a game plan that is going to show consistency in your business because if your business is not going to change or evolve overnight, but it will over time. And if you have consistent reflection, consistent sharing of your vision, consistent um, forward motion um, in your life in one way or another, it doesn't have to be with just like, you know, your personal physical journey. You can have forward motion in a lot of ways. And I think consistency will help you create that forward motion um, with your followers. Any questions about this stuff, guys? It's like, are we all on the same page here still? I hope this is helping. Okay, so we're gonna brainstorm branded hashtags for each of the seven things, okay? Um, branded hashtags are gonna be a little bit different than the hashtags that you put underneath your photo. So for example, I have a branded hashtag. If any of you start using my branded hashtag, I don't even know what I will do. I will laugh at you, honestly, because if you use my branded hashtag, you're totally missing the point of this because you just branded yourself as me instead of you. <laughs> okay. So my branded hashtag is girl boss diaries. The last time I shared that, like as go click on girl boss diaries, it's mostly my photos, but then it, <laughs> You'll see there's like a couple other people that have started using it. Not really on our team, but I just think it's really funny. I'm like, okay, like that's just defeats the purpose. You don't have to be the only person using the hashtag that you use as your branded hashtag, but you want it to stand apart from everybody else. So you don't want to use something that another beach body coach is using because that's definitely not going to set you apart. Um, so Jess, let's think of one for you. Uh, let's think of one hashtag that you are going to put on every single photo from here on out. And I put Girl Boss Diaries on almost everything. Um, I, actually had one. I had one. I stopped using it because I changed. I stopped using it when I changed my Instagram name. Um, it was PCOS lifestyle changes because I was determined to change my lifestyle and have another baby and lose the weight. And I actually did all of those, <laughs> most of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, actually I did majority of those things and, um, I changed it, but it was PCOS lifestyle changes. It was my Instagram name for three and a half years. And then it was the one I posted with, I think with every single picture okay. and I still do it every now and then. So I, uh, I'm going to just say, go back to using that. Okay. I don't like, you're still having, aren't you, isn't that still a goal, right? Yeah. It's, for, it's a forever for me. So exactly. PCOS never goes away. Like it's, it's a blessing that you had two beautiful babies, but you still have PCOS, right? Yeah. So, um, I would say go back to using that. Like, yeah, I just clicked on it and here, like, hold on one second. I want to show you, this is good. So I just clicked on PCOS lifestyle changes. And look, Jess is in the top nine up here. She's all up here. I, I think this is all, is this all you? Except for that little chicken dish thing. But yes, the rest of them are, in, most of them are actually my coaching posts, which I'm really surprised that those are the top ones. But um, yes, those are, eight of those are mine. Cool. That's great. That's what we're looking for. She's rocking this hashtag. Even if other people are using it, she's the top nine. Let's go to Girl Boss Diaries. Same thing. There's other people using it, but I'm the top nine. All, to all the nine are my photos. So all these other people that are using my hashtag, I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so find your hashtag that's like that and use it religiously. 
I, I think it's, I think it's really beneficial because it gives people a way to click on your journey and kind of see, um, you know, a different snapshot of your life. I mean, yeah, if, it's, if you're using it on all your photos, but it's just, it's just different. Just, just use it that way. Because if someone doesn't follow you and they click girl boss diaries, they're going to see a bunch of your photos and maybe they will come follow you. Oh my goodness. Light bulbs going off. I'm the queen of overcomplication. Okay, this is so great. Yeah, sometimes we just need to keep it really simple. And I hope that this helps you do that. So once you've found your branded hashtag, for each day of the week, you come up with two themed hashtags. So my theme on Mondays is Mondays with Marley. So I hashtag Mondays with Marley. And then the second hashtag is stay at home dog mom. Okay, so for each of your seven things, you should have two specific hashtags that you always use when you post that day's theme or whatever, okay? So right now, we're gonna go through and create, I'm like, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out if this is helpful doing it like workshop style on the call. For those of you that are just listening and are not doing the example, do you want me can you raise your hand? I'm looking at you guys all in the gallery view. Can you raise your hand if you want me to continue with this, this, this current example of going through and creating two branded hashtags? Or do you kind of get that concept and should we move on to the majority of hashtags, which is like the 25 plus? Does that make sense? <laughs> Does anyone have a vote here? <laughs> yes. What? I think I get the branded hashtags. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. You get the branded hashtags. You need to take some time and think about this. If, if I go through Jess's and come up with her branded hashtags, I feel like it's going to take me 10 years. I want to go through it with you, Jess, but just for the purposes of a team call and not losing everyone on, we're going to keep plugging forward. So make sure you come up with those branded hashtags as well. Now, um, after you come up with your branded hashtags, that's when you're gonna now work on doing your hashtag research. This is doing um, or creating a list of hashtags to reach your dream clients. So not to reach other beach body coaches, which I know is what a lot of people have been struggling with, is that they're reaching either coaches or people that are you know trying to sell them something or get them to join their network marketing company or whatever. Um, is anyone struggling with that? Do you find who's struggling with that with their hashtags? Cause I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, um, I'm going to give you some general rules, but then we're also just going to, I'm going to show you exactly how I would help Jess come up with her 25. Okay. So you're going to avoid all health and fitness hashtags. Like I said, Oh my gosh, <laughs> this emoji, this is perfect. <laughs> okay, so um, avoid all health and fitness hashtags unless you're using it for a purpose. It's okay to use Beach Body Coach or Proud Beach Body Coach or 21 Day Fix every once in a while, but you should really only be using like one or maybe two. But avoid it, really. If you need, if things are black and white for you and you don't do well in that gray zone, avoid it altogether, okay? Do your research, do your research, do your research. It takes time. Um, use your branded topics to help you get outside of that health and fitness box. So now that we've got those, those seven things, we can use that as a, as a starting ground to come up with a list of hashtags that are going to reach Jess's dream person who is not a beach body coach yet, who is a mom of girls, who might have married their high school sweetheart, has PCOS, is working on their postpartum journey, like, yeah, maybe postpartum journey kind of has something to do with health and fitness, but it's so much more specific than just weight loss or transformation or weight loss journey or whatever. I don't even know what the health and fitness hashtags are anymore, fitspo, because I don't use them and I don't look at them and they are like white noise to me, okay? Um, create two to three groups of 25. Why 25? Because I've left you a little playroom in case you use some hashtags in your caption. You can, you can post up to 30 hashtags on each photo, okay? So this is 25 hashtags that you are going to save in your notepad on your phone and have them easily accessible to copy and paste 
into your photos so that you're never sitting there typing out your hashtags like, oh, I need a hashtag this photo. No, 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 no. If you're typing out hashtags, do yourself a favor and type them out in your notepad so then you can copy and paste them and use them over and over and over again, right? Okay, that's, gonna, that's working smarter, not harder, okay? So I'm gonna stop the share and Jess and I are gonna work on creating a list of hashtags together. So, um, Where's my spotlight at? Hold on. Let me just. Okay. I wish I could get it with just our two faces up, but I can't. I have this mindset that I have to be posting specifically related to what I am posting. Yes, I have been there, but no, that is not true. Okay. And um, you need to be posting things related to what people are going to see when they come to your page. So stop thinking about the one specific photo, and if it's related to your page, then we're on the right track, okay? We don't wanna just like be hashtagging, you know, I mean, you wanna be hashtagging coffee. You wanna be hashtagging barista life. You wanna be having all of those hashtags on your social media, Deanna, because that is who you are. That's who you are. So like, yeah, I, Posting barista life on your Shakeology picture may not seem like it makes a whole lot of sense, but it really does because that's who you're trying to to work with is the barista that doesn't want to wake up at 5 a.m. anymore, right? <laughs> um, okay, tangent. Sorry, I'm really good at doing those. <laughs> Let's get back to where we were. So we are coming up with a list of hashtags for Jess. And I am going to probably end up screen sharing my phone so I can show you how I do this on my phone. Um, okay, cool. Let me go back to the list of things that we said first. Okay. So a mom of girls. So we're gonna start there. That should be one of your hashtags. So mom of girls. There's 258,000 posts on here, which is actually a really good number. So mom of girls. So this is for each of the 25 hashtags that you use, you need to spend time doing this. This takes time. We're probably not gonna get through all 25 on this call tonight or at least not on the recording. I'm happy to continue to go through it with you, Jess. But, um, so here we are, mom of girls. I wanna look at this. Is this targeting the person that I wanna be targeting or am I just getting beach body coaches? Now, obviously here is a beach body coach. I can tell because she's wearing a turbo fire shirt. Um, and so yeah, there is some beach body coaches using this, but is it all beach body coaches? No. Um, and so I'm gonna look at who is using this stuff. Okay. Now let's say, here we go. Um, here is someone that's probably not a Beachbody coach and I'm gonna see what types of hashtags she's using. Mom of two, almost three, mom of girls. So that's not really, like if Jess was pregnant, maybe she would start using that hashtag, but she's not right now. So we're not gonna use that one, but you get what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to get ideas from the people who are using the hashtags that might be my target market. Um, yeah, and it does look like there is some beach body coaches or some sort of coaches on here. Um, what's this one? That's a real life right there. That's a real life post. <laughs> See, there we go. Okay, like, this is good. Now, who is this lady? Mother of four. Mm -hmm. 30 day spring into learning for educational activities with your child. So it looks like she's like, she's a really passionate mom, but she's, I don't think she's a coach. So this is a good person that we want to, we want to do some research on. So maybe you follow her, maybe you like her post. I'm liking it, but she's not really mine. And so I'm going to look at her hashtags and get some other ideas. And I'm going to take some, I'm going to start clicking on these mommy motivation. Like, let's see what mommy motivation comes up as. Um, once again, if you scroll something and you see all beach body coaches or herbal life coaches, maybe that's not the hashtag we want to use, right? Okay. Um, I definitely think crazy is a good one. <laughs> that's the truth. Life, mom life is crazy. That's is probably that, the one I 
That's probably what I'm going to use because it is. Okay. Yeah. And I don't see that on here, but yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah. Mom life is crazy. Like if we go to crazy, for example, cause let's just click on crazy. Cause we're talking about that now here. We're, we're at 3 million posts or, Oh wait, excuse me. Not 3 million, 37 million posts. And these are all about random things. Please don't use like hashtag one word that has nothing to do. This isn't branded. This isn't targeted. This is weird. A shot in the dark, right? You have no idea what you're going to get with that. But home, oh wait, wait, homeschooling, like if you were homeschooling or whatever, like that's much more branded, right? You want to just get deeper on some of these things. And um, so that's one way that I like to come up with new hashtags is by looking at my target market. Another is, hold on, if we go to mom of girls at the top, this related section. So now Instagram is suggesting all of these hashtags for us. So I don't just try to come up with hashtags off of the tip of my brain because like, I mean, that like, that'd be another shot in the dark. Don't just throw darts at a dartboard and hope you make it right. Do your research. So moms of IG, let's see what's going on with that one. I mean, this is just the top nine photos. I love them. Um, of course, there we go. Shakeology. Um, so it's really easy for me and see, you don't want people, I, I don't want to be a person where someone looks at the photo and it's like, oh, beach body coach, right? Do we need to post pictures with shaker bottles? Just That's what's been up. happening a lot. And I, so I tried to stop doing shakeology posts. I'm trying, but yes, that's happening to me. I've literally lost like a hundred followers in like the last week. <laughs> Okay, so just, it doesn't, you can post about your Shakeology without posting about it in a Shakeology shaker cup. You can post about your superfoods without calling it Shakeology. So you just got to get, you know, oh my God, this is hilarious. Oh gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's look, let's look at some of her hashtags. Moms be like, okay, that is hilarious, right? Like, uh, I am or I'm a mom or whatever, mom problems. Like now we're getting deeper into real life mom shit, right? Um, wine is a gluten-free diet. Like this, this is good. Like mom be like, that to me would be a good hashtag. Um, mommy problems. Funny posts have been working for me in the, sh like they're, they're it's just something I'm like crumbling in. Yeah. And I'm getting like, a, I do get a lot of feedback even on Facebook um on that so it's something i'm trying to like crumble into my business i just don't want to do it all the time because i don't want to be like complaining but there are some good ones i have saved in my phone for like just for like a rainy day <laughs> i mean i don't think it's complaining you know you, you just gotta watch how you talk about it right it's oh it's, it's totally fine to be real uh i think it's really relatable but there's a i i know what you're saying but i think it's more about the way you do it versus okay. i think it's a great idea so i i would encourage that for sure so that was just one mommy problems. Okay. So now let's go to high school sweetheart. You guys see how I do this? Like it, it takes some time. Um, and, and from that, maybe we pulled three hashtags, right? Because we got, um, mommy problems, moms be like, um, moms of IG, right? But maybe we pulled three hashtags from that five minutes of research or whatever. High school. Probably nothing for this particular you don't think? Mm, I don't. Have you looked at it? I haven't. No, I've never. Look at this. I've never looked it up. <laughs> I think it could be good. Okay. Now on this, you want to find high school sweethearts that maybe you've got kids, you know, or whatever, and, and see what they're using. Like, go deeper. Let's see. Let's look at these people. What are they using? No, nothing there. Um, man, I guess weed is a lot of people's high school sweetheart. That's interesting. Um, okay. It's so sappy. That's why I was like, I didn't look it up, but. I mean, but that's cute. Like that's, that's, I don't think a lot of people can say it. And so it's kind of, it's like, it's something that people can relate to. Uh, maybe it's not all of the hashtags you use, but you, you know, find a couple of them. I'm trying to find something beyond high school sweetheart. So let's go to the top. My forever, my better half. Um, let's look at my better half. Uh, 
Um, I just think that it's important to include, include something about it because this is going to help you attract women who want to create a family with their high school sweethearts and want to have a life with them. They don't want their high school sweethearts to be working seven days a week or whatever, right? Like it's going to help you attract a person like you. Um, but you have to decide, you know, like how many hashtags go to each of these things. So holistic mama with PCOS, let's go to that and see what we can find. So PCOS lifestyle change. I'm just going to click that because that was your, oh, it doesn't give me any recommendations on that one. Okay. Well, that's too specific. Let's go to PCOS. So when we go to PCOS, we then get all of these hashtags up here at the top. PCOS awareness, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And let's just see what they're using. PCOS warrior. Yeah, you just want to get deep on all of these, okay? And come up with 25. You should never be using hashtags that are in the millions. Like, if it has a million photos, your photo is going to be gone instantly. So I would really recommend focusing on hashtags that have, uh, unless it's your branded hashtags, so unless it's that group of three that we talked about previously, I would focus on having 10,000 plus to, like, 500,000 max. 500,000 is a lot. 250 would be more of my ballpark. Um, that's just me personally. Now, on Instagram, the strategy you would use would be a little bit different, right? But this is, you, you're trying to find people like you. Okay, so you really, oh. I did like the chef, the, I started using like chef wife or I did that once, I think a couple of times and I got some I found some similar people. Um, I think I've just been not, I know I've not been reaching out to people that are like me. I've been reaching out to people who I think might want to be a coach or might join a challenge group um, more than people like me. Yeah. And you want to, the thing is everyone needs what we have, you know? Um, and there's no way to know. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Um, there's no way to know who that person is. Um, which is why I like to just focus far more on you versus people who are going to need you because the person that's like you probably doesn't even know they need you yet, but they do. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, that's true. like you're going to be the person that strikes that or like, you know, lights the light bulb up for them. They're like, Whoa, like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm just totally jumbling my words right now. I am the wife of a chef, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, be eating unhealthy. It's important for me to still fuel my body, but yet I'm probably around delicious food all the time, right? Because I'm sure he knows how to cook amazing food, right? So like, it, it's a struggle that you're going to be able to relate to their struggle and, and they need you, right? Because you know the things that they go through. You know yeah. all of the yummy thing. I don't know. Does he bring home leftovers or things that he makes at work? Like, yeah, he's bringing home stuff that I can't eat. He throws cheese on it, which is very upsetting. So yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that's a struggle that those women are going to be able to relate to, but I can't really relate to. And that's why I'm not your person. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I hope that this helps you guys. I don't want to I don't want to, I feel like I'm dragging on and kind of rambling and I want to respect your guys' time because we've gone kind of over tonight. Um, but you really got to dig deep with these 25 hashtags and it's going to take you time, especially to create two to three groups. So first, like after this call, go audit your bio, go look at your bio and see what is up with it. Um, like where, what do we need to tweak? What do we need to change? Um, what is my feed telling my 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 followers right now when my if i was a, if if i was my own follower would i reach out to me if i was one of my own followers would i know how to reach out to me would i know how to contact me would i know that my door is even open like put yourself in the shoes of someone who's coming and stalking you and um speak to that person in a deeper way and 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 hashtag the shit out of things but make sure you're using hashtags that are actually going to 
um, find that dream person. So like another example would be if you want to grow a local team, start using local hashtags, you know, find out what all of the local hashtags are in your area. Start hashtagging the city you live in, start hashtagging everything around you, start hashtagging your favorite business, start hashtagging the coffee bean, start hashtagging whatever it is that like is you or nanny life or whatever it is. And that is going to help you so much more than trying to find the best health and fitness hashtags out there because they're, they don't exist. Right. Um, and just having, having a list of seven things that your brand is about beyond Beachbody with these hashtags is going to give you something to constantly lean on. So you're not like, what do I post today? Let me just throw something up. Anytime you get that inkling, like, oh my gosh, I've been so quiet on social media. I need to do something. Instead, go back to your social media game plan and be like, okay, what's today? Okay. I, it's, it's holistic mama with PCOS day. Now I need to talk about how di getting diagnosed with PCOS encouraged me to, or helped set me on the foot of being a holistic mama. I breastfeed now because it's not only the best for my baby, but it's the cheapest and, um, it helps with all of her allergies or whatever. Like tell the story behind those things because when you start telling those stories and you're using those hashtags, you're now speaking to your dream client. Does that make sense? It goes hand in hand. You can't just, you know, um, do these seven branded things, but then not switch up your hashtags and expect to get a result. Okay. Um, questions, questions, questions. I'm going to go through the chat box. So please, if you've got any questions for me, ask. Um, so it's a good thing to use hashtags that other people are using. Yes. If you're using a hashtag that nobody's using, nobody sees it, right? Using a hashtag that nobody else is using is okay for the branded hashtags. But for your 25, you want to make sure that there's eyes on it. So now this person, I would be discouraged to contact because it looks as though she's already an entrepreneur, but we need to post about it. So how? It's okay to contact other entrepreneurs. Just because someone's an entrepreneur doesn't mean they're a successful entrepreneur. Um, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are serial entrepreneurs, so they'll jump from one thing to the next. So don't eliminate entrepreneurs, but maybe eliminate Beachbody coaches. I don't target people that are in other MLMs, but I'm fine with entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs can pursue more than one thing, right? I love helping entrepreneurs create an extra stream of income so they can focus on their passion project and leave their corporate day job because most creatives out there, most entrepreneurs, that's their side hustle. There's not very many entrepreneurs out there that are actually doing it full time. So you might have something that can help them. Um, so post about it, like work, like workflow. Don't post about it like an entrepreneur. Just post about it like you're at work so that you target people that are at work. Like I know Alexa does that a lot. Like she, cause she was, um, you know, hated her desk job. So what, what are some of the hashtags you post now, Alex, for, for like work stuff? I unmuted you, by the way. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to pull up my thing. Well, I just kind of changed mine, but it was like office life or, de or like at my desk, like, or something like that. Um, yeah. Hold on. I'm trying to pull it up. Sorry. I just changed but, I mean, the, but even the, just those two, that's a great example of like, she's posting yeah. hashtags that people at work are hashtagging, right? Corporate climber. That kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to like look. No, no, no. That's 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 perfect. It's just talking to Alexa before Beachbody, so that's great. Um, okay, so if you have, I don't know if you have an opinion about this, but mental health is a huge part of me, and I struggle with hashtags related to it because that can be on IG can be very negative and dark if you hashtag the wrong thing. It's so much a part of me that I cannot not include it, but I feel like I'm not attracting people I want to work with. While I would love to seriously change those people's lives, I also feel, I also like, sorry, I also like have a no negativity rule. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, and I think it's very important. So it's about finding the right hashtags to network in that community on a positive note. So we can look at that really quick. What are, what are, um, I'm going to unmute you, Catherine. What are some of your hashtags? So I've been just doing like blanket ones really because I feel like I, and while we were doing this, I was going through some of those. Um, 
and you know like one of the ones I wanted to use was beating bipolar and there's a bunch of like beach body and advocate people that use that so I don't really want to use that one mm -hmm. um and then other ones like even just and literally I feel like anything related to like that kind of community like it just is usually like really not okay stuff that okay so and I'm like oh, I don't want this <laughs> I have a question for you. So, um, <clears throat> before you were a Beachbody coach, what was your, how were you interacting with that community? Were you networking with them on Instagram? Were you on Instagram? I was on Instagram, but I, I like, I wasn't really active on it, um, that much. And I have made friends in that community on Instagram that are like positive people that, you know, I want to be around, but um, for the most part, I, I tend to like stay, I tended to stay away from it because it just is so negative and weird. I don't know how to describe it. I think it's just a matter of finding the right hashtags because I don't think the whole community is negative. I think you just need to find the right hashtags like that. And I get what you're saying, like beating bipolar is a positive one, but other people are using it. So I, I'm looking right now. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard because when you just type in anything general, like just to see what other creative stuff comes up, you still get like really uncomfortable posts. Yeah. <laughs> can I ask, say, can I just, it's related to her. Thing. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, so just, I've struggled with mental health as well, but it's not something that I ever share. And like, I think maybe just off what, just from what learning, what Lauren's saying is that maybe if you, uh, if we, or like dig in, like she was saying, dig deeper and find more people. Cause like I said, I will never, it's just something I don't feel comfortable sharing, but I'm still someone who signed up as a coach and loves positivity. Like I spew positivity in my household. It's a must, but maybe to find those people who don't look for people who are having those issues or saying those things because maybe they're not ready. Yeah. For positivity that, okay. or, sorry. I don't, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No, I agree. I agree. So uh, I think maybe the person that you are targeting has a mental illness and isn't as vocal about it. They're maybe struggling in the closet more or less. Mm -hmm. And so by talking about it in your post and maybe, um, I do think you should use some hashtags, but you've got to really dig and find the ones that are going to work for you. Yeah. Um, so like I'm on one right now that's like end the stigma. Um, and it has 148,000 posts and it, it, I don't see anything beach body related or here I can share. I don't know why I'm not sharing. Um, so like you've got to just, it's going to, it's not going to be obvious. None of this is going to be obvious. And I think that's like people want simple, simple solutions and simple answers to things. But when it comes to this, it's so worth doing the research because it'll serve you for so long. It'll serve um, your market. But this, this one and the stigma looks good and it's got 148,000 and I really don't see, you know, it's people that are working on living a more positive life. And then up at the top, mental health awareness, like some, some of these stuff, as you start to get to, you know, ending the stigma, you might find some. Now I would encourage for any of these topics, for any of these topics, you're going to put like maybe three to five hashtags that are mental health related. That's it. Okay. Right. You need to find three to five hashtags that really work for that category. Or maybe it is more of the, um, the happiness stuff body, body positive, self-love. Cause this person, she's, you know, she's, she's doing stuff, but she's also just targeting people. Someone who's struggling with mental health, maybe they're going to look for something like uh, under the kindness and, um, kindness matters or whatever, or be kind or, you know, you just got to think about what is that person looking at? Yep. Um, I remember Emma just told me recently, she just got off the call, but like someone found her um, most recently on Instagram, they, they were going through a really hard time and they found her on some of, one of her quotes, positivity quotes or something, you know, it was just a quote that they found. So, um, yeah. Okay. But that was a great question. I definitely think it's something important. It's a really important for you to make that a part of your brand, um, but find a way to bring light to it. Thank you. Um, the how do we post about it was for Shakeology. Oh, 
How do we post about it? We talk about what the superfoods do for us. We talk about what the nutrition does for us. We talk about how quick and easy it is to make when we're out running out the door. It, it's, about, it's about describing what it does for you instead of being like, this is my Shakeology and it has all this amazing stuff in it and you should drink it too, right? Like explain how it helps you or what it's doing for you and that's different on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. And, and I've seen your posts about Shakeology and I've never, I don't think you've done any that are with the, I've seen you post like with a glass, but it's never, I don't think it's been the Shakeology shaker bottle. Here, I'm looking now. <laughs> Okay, there is one down there, but no, they're, otherwise they're fine. Like, it, it's okay to post a shaker bottle every once in a while. Like, I'm not saying don't ever post it, but just don't get in the habit of like doing that as, as the main way you talk about things. Yours looks really good. Like, Deanna, for being a new coach, like this is awesome, so. Okay, there's 13 of you on who have made it through this epically long team call. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm so sorry that it went this long. I just don't know how to keep things short, I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but if you've got any questions about what we talked about tonight, please, please, please post on the team page. I'd love to help you um, and all that good stuff, but stick around for those of you that are on live. We're going to do the post call giveaway.